Hello guys, welcome to Sadan's World and this is Sadan. Alright, and in this channel what we do is to prepare students for various exams like Wyatt, Neko, Jam, etc. So here, in this video, I will be taking you through your SL2 103 possible questions, highly possible questions. Okay, so in fact, it's so possible to the extent that you don't need to study your textbook anymore. Okay, with these questions here, you are good to go with the exams and the test. So we started. I started this video series. Some I think that was last week, and I've done part one. So this is part two. In case you've not seen part one, I would advise you go and check out that one first before you continue with this one. So without wasting much time, let's just get started. SL one hundred and three, part two. So the first microscope. But before that, I think in the, in the part one we did not finish up with the questions in the part one yet. I skipped some questions in part one. So, uh, in the part one, I said write short notes, okay? Write short notes on the following lab apparatus. So let's let me talk about each of them now. On the following lab apparatus, okay? So here we have evaporation dishes, okay? Evaporation dishes, like the name implies, they are used for evaporating liquids. So a solution. So it's the same thing, okay? Wash glass. Um, watch glass is also used for evaporating liquids too and it can also be used for covering the beaker take note of this so evaporation dish and watch glass they do perform the same function but watch glass is actually smaller than evaporation the evaporation dishes are usually larger than this okay and another difference is that watch glass can also be used for covering purpose okay covering the beaker litmus paper you know what it does it's used to test the ph okay to check for the pH okay filter paper this is used for filtration all right it's used for filtration process now in this filtration process you should know that we have what we call the filtrate and the residual all together you should know we have what we call the word filtrate and the word residual now when I when I pour a mixture a mixture of salt a solution of salt okay and water inside a filter paper uh, okay okay sorry it's gonna pass through. let me see mm. Excuse me. The solution of sand and water, okay? On the filter paper, the, the sand will be left on top. The, um, what is it called? Water will pass through the pores. So, the sand is the residual, while the water that passed is the um, filtrate. Please get that clear, okay? Okay? Whatever filter paper is used, we have residue is one on top, the filter paper, um, um, filtrate is one that will pass through, so whether it is a solution or a liquid, whatever, that's the filtrate. The next one we have is bonsin burner. So, bonsin burner, you know what it does, it is used for burning, obviously. Okay? So, it's, yes, it's used for heating. Mm -hmm. What else do I need to say? It's for heating. Then, we have the thermometer, this is used for checking temperature, okay? We have the alcohol burner, okay, it's true. Most people don't know that the same way we have bonsin burner, that's how we have alcohol burner, okay? We also have alcohol burner, so alcohol burner also, okay? But the thing is that this alcohol burner don't have a very, they don't burn at a very high, bonsin burner burn at a higher temperature than alcohol burner okay yes at the higher temperature than this one and this is more common bonsin burner is more common than alcohol burner so spatulas you know what they are used for spatulas are used for carrying small piece okay of powders and um, specimens in the lab um, okay so petri dish petri dishes okay these are glass plates okay with glass cover that are used to culture microorganisms inside of them all right these are glass plates with glass cover that are used to culture microorganisms inside of them now uh, i want to say something that is also very important this battery but before i explain more you know what culturing of microorganisms mean okay so culturing of microorganisms has to do with a techniques um that has to do with um training Mm -hmm. well, let me see 
you know that microorganisms are supposed to be found in living things, living environments, something like that. Okay, so when these microorganisms are trained in the lab, that's what we call culturing. Okay, so uh, the petri dishes are used for that uh, purpose, and there's one, there's one other apart to that I'm not seeing here that's called inoculating loops. These inoculating loops work hand in hand with the petri dish. Okay, so what it does is that it is used to spread the bacteria in the petri dish. Whenever you mention a petri dish, it's also mention inoculating loop. Okay, all right. So glass lights, glass lights are used for observation of very small specimens. Okay, in the lab, so the cover slips are used for covering the glass light. Okay, to prevent any further interaction with the environment. All right, so. So that's how it works. So the next one we have is dissecting pan. So this dissecting pan is like a, a plate. Let's say let's call it a plate or what? Um dissecting pan is a is a pan now. Is a pan. I'm thinking of what to call it call to call it plate or it's a very flat pan like this. It is a pan. So dissecting pan is a, you know what dissecting means already? Dissecting means um, the careful tearing of a living stuff, okay? To uh, to see the internal part of it. So dissecting plan, pan, this is where we place, okay, organisms when dissecting it, okay? Or organisms to be dissected, something like that. Right. So that's dissecting pan. Okay, so you know what droppers mean? These are used for indicators okay these are used for dropping indicators in, in little drops until we get what we are expecting yes that that's what it means so we should have one again you know you, you know we have pipettes so that this one now is used in our um Titration, okay, titration. One of your past customers might say which of these is not a major component of the titration process whatsoever. So this pipette is used in titration, okay? It's used for titrating. Alright, so graduated cylinder, that one is used for measuring, okay, measuring volume of um, or let me see it's used for storing solutions. Mm, it's used for so it's used for measuring exact volume of a liquid basically that was yeah that's the basic function of the graduate um, graduating or graduated it's supposed to be graduated cylinder okay it's used for storing exact volume of a solution or a liquid okay then what next conical flask sorry i jumped one um funnel so the funnel is used for um directing liquid okay into a container something like that yes this is for directing liquid into a container all right the next one we have is conical flask please have it in mind that conical flask is also called a lemaya flask okay conical flask is also called a lemaya flask and the basic purpose is mixing of solution so have that in mind okay to mix solutions that's the basic purpose the way it is structured the way it is constructed is Consider in such a way that you miss solution without the solution spilling. You no, know, it looks like a like a bottle or something like that. So, the major purpose is for mixing of what solutions. Okay, yes. So, all right. The next one. What is the next one? Um, forceps. Okay, beakers. Um, beakers. Uh, these are glass apparatus. Also, okay, glass apparatus okay made of the glass is specifically made of silicate take note of that okay remember we've talked about in chapter one in part one we talked about um some materials we mentioned that the glassware we use are usually borosilicate borosilicate material is the best material okay because it can withstand many other things many um mechanical shock and all the rest so these beakers are made up of this borosilicate they are glassware and they're made up of borosilicate materials it's also important to take note that um, the there's something that's very important about this beaker you need to know for your exam sake. Eh? Now see that this beaker they contain calibrations, they contain measure like 
um, cali- I don't know if I understand what I mean by calibration. Like we do 200, 200 like that. But they are not used for measuring. Take note of that. They are not used for measuring volumes of solution. That is not their work. They, if you want to get volumes of solution, we use a, um, um, the graduating, graduated cylinder. Hope you are getting the concept. So be very careful. Yes. So they contain this. They contain the calibration, but then their major purpose is not for measuring. Okay. The major purpose is to to keep the solution to store. And if you check on top of the beaker, check on top of the beaker. The beaker has something like this. Um, can I do? It has a a, a, a a rim, and it has something like so that look like cup cup. This stuff you have on your cup like this. Okay, so it means that it is also used for pouring pouring of solutions with ease. Okay, pouring out solution with what ease. Now we we want that that guy. That guy doesn't have a cover, okay? What we use in covering it is different from um, from the from the uh, some persons feel the cover is the same thing, okay? The cover is not at all. The cover is not okay. So what I, the cover sometimes they use the watch glass. Remember that before we talked about watch glass that. They are used for evaporation and they are also used in covering the beaker. We said it before. So don't get it twisted, okay? Um, the beakers can also be used for mixing too. They also be used for mixing, okay? But basically, not for measurement. Take note of that, okay? The next one we have is forceps. Okay, forceps, this is very simple. Now. They look like a um, clip for picking small specimens. Like clip for picking small specimens. That's what the forceps look like. Electronic banners, these are used for measuring mass of specimens. Yes, like, how am I going to put it now? Mm. Uh -huh, it's used for measuring mass now, finish. But you all should know that it works with electricity. Hot plates, these are used for heating materials in glasswares. Yes, hot plates are used for heating materials in glasswares. Heating materials. Um, that's just it, and heating solutions in glasses. And then some of them come with what we call magnetic stirrer. That's another thing to take note of. This magnetic stirrer, what it does is that as it as you are heating it, okay, the magnetic stirrer will just keep on stirring the solution at once, okay. So dissecting tool kits, dissecting, you know, we said before that dissecting has to do with um, the process of tearing a body, okay, to observe the internal structure and internal future of the organism okay so dissecting toolkit this is a particular um will i call it a particular box okay that contains all the tools needed for the dissection okay you should take note yes like a box that contains all the tools needed for um dissection Basically, yes. All right, up next we have is the test tubes and test tube racks. Um, test tube is not difficult. Test tube, these are used for mixing and storing, okay, of um, reagents. The racks, that is where we keep them so that they will not break, okay? Just like, you get, most of you that have gone been to the lab before, you must have seen it. So that's what we call test tube rack. The next one we have is what? Microscope. So microscope, these are used for seeing, for um, viewing very tiny, um organisms okay that are not very visible to the human eyes okay safety apparatus safety apparatus these are apparatus that a lab scientist must must, must um, put on or work with for the safety of the person okay in engineering and science and technology safety is very very important so example of the safety apparatus are talking about the you're talking about your shoe okay those of you in school here uniport and UNN, UST2, you see that they won't allow you to walk in with slippers, okay? And they will allow you to, they always advise you to put on your shoes. So, your shoes, your, your goggles, okay? Let me, there's something I wrote down somewhere. Ah, 
I don't, I don't find it. I wrote it down somewhere. Your shoes, your goggles, your gloves. Yes, your gloves. In case of any spillage, and all the rest, and all the rest. All right. The time is already fast spent. But let's look at this other side here. So yeah, we said the first microscope was that what we have. The first microscope discovered was the dash it was the light microscope that was discovered first okay before later on we advanced into electron microscope and even other advanced one okay the light microscope has lots of limitations because it could not do many things okay there's a, there's how tiny that particular um object will be it will automatically appear blur okay there's how tiny it will be it, yes it's automatically what instead of projecting it to appear blur like electron microscope that is going to go straight no matter how tiny it is and get us what we need okay the actual view hope you get what i'm saying yes the actual view and let me say something here see there was one problem that that light light uh, microscope had okay there's a limit to which the light listen very well this i have to see There's a limit. How am I going to put this thing now? Hmm? Let, let me show you something. There's a limit to which light can project. Okay. There's how small that, like I said, it's how tiny it will be. Yeah, it's not able to project it. And what is the standard in science? What is the standard? The standard is half the wavelength of light. The wavelength of light, white light, is 0 0.55 micrometers. Please take note of that. The wavelength of white light is was 0.55. Lots of questions come out from here because we'll be giving you other wavelengths to tell you if light can, uh, like can give us um, help we can see with light microscope. The wavelength of light is what again? 0.55 micrometer. Now, if that particular specimen want to see, okay, How am I going to, yes, if that particular specimen want to has half has anything less than half of the wavelength of light. Let me write it down somewhere around here. Half of 0.55 should be about 0.275. Please check your calculator to confirm. So if that um, object you want to view is less than this, which is half of the wavelength of light, the light microscope could not view it anymore. We will not be able to see it or, or what's come to us to appear blur. I hope you are getting the concept here. So, I hope you are getting the concept here. So that is how it works. Okay. Let's look at other ones very quickly. So the next question we have is which other things? Okay. The first microscope was discovered in what period? It was discovered in a period called the Renaissance period. Can I explain it? This one like uh, so R E I think N E I double S E N C E Renaissance period. Okay, Renaissance period is the period after the Dark Middle Ages. So I'm very sure you must have heard of this in movies. So that was when the microscopes were involved, were discovered. Renaissance period. Okay, is a period after the Dark Middle Ages. Renaissance period period after the dark middle ages. So now you should take it note that this same period is the microscope was not just invented this period, okay? Other things were invented like were invented like a uh, map. I always use map G to remember, okay? Like the Marinas M M stands for Marinas Compass. In America was also discovered that same period, okay? Um printing was also in progress that same period. And also the gunpowder was also invented that same period. Let me get a piece of paper so that I will do something. What am I using? Okay, so I don't want to be using this so I can snap and send to my students. But I don't, don't want to write in the answers here. So I'll be using this piece of paper for the answers. Alright, so I said this microscope were discovered in what period? Were discovered in what period after the dash? Okay, see, this was, I haven't given a wrong answer to this. It was discovered in the Renaissance period, okay, after the Middle Dark Age, okay? Or the Dark Middle Ages. And I said, not only this was discovered at that time, 
even other stuff i carefully noted with map g we discovered that time so the the mariner's compass okay america was also discovered that time printing was also discovered that time and then gunpowder was also discovered that time let's look at the next question the next question is it says which other things were discovered that same period man man i just said it now i just said it okay map g mariner's compass okay let me write this so you understand mariner's like Compass American, you know that one printing gunpowder. Uh -huh. The next one we have is what is a microscope? So, a microscope, uh, um, you know that one, that one is very simple now. Microscope, these are these are the lab apparatus that make use of lenses, okay, for the visualization of very tiny specimens that are not visible to the naked eyes. So it's easy, easy peasy. So they said the name lenses came from, okay, um, came because they were like the seed of a lentil. Yes, that's correct. The name lenses came because they were like a, the seed of a lentil. That's easy peasy, okay? All right. The earlier simple microscope is called flea glasses. Yes. The earlier simple microscope is just like a tube and lens on one side, an object on one side, and so on. It's called flea glass because that was what they were actually using it to do then. They were not using it for very important things. So, mm, they were not using it for very important things. Who invented the first microscope? Okay, I think this is, that was in um, 1959. Okay, if I'm not mistaken. Sorry, 1959. Is, ah, what, 1959 is close now. 1590. That was in 1590, yes. Yes, 1590. A man and his son. But what we do is that in science we just accredit it to the man himself. The name of I think the name of the son is Hans. The name of the man is uh, Zachariah Jensen. Zachariah, Zachariah Jensen. That's the name of the man, the first person that invented the microscope. All right, the first person that invented the microscope. Yes, Zachariah Jensen. You should take note that it is different from a telescope. The inventor of a telescope was um, Galileo. Okay. And that was later on in 1609. Take note, the inventor of my thing is Galileo, later on in 1609. But this guy, the first person was well, that was in 1590. In 1609, Galileo now invented this thing. Uh, what is it called? The microscope, like the, the telescope. Okay, so take note, there are two different things and two different histories. Okay, look at what I'm seeing in Telesis now. Who invented the telescope? You can see. Okay, so Galileo. Okay, you can see microscope, um, Zachariah Jensen with his son. Okay, Zachariah Jensen with his son. Now they're asking who is the father of microscope. Now, despite the father, this guy invented microscope, Zachariah Jensen. He's not the father of microscope. Okay, he's not the father of microscope. The father of microscope is somebody that later that came into the picture later on. Okay, I can't even let that one. And I think his name is um, Charles A. Spencer. Look at his name here. Charles A. Spencer is the father of microscope. He did a lot. He did a lot of modification when it comes to the microscope. Okay, what was uh, what was the next one? Okay, so Charles A. Spencer also contributed to the invention of microscope. Yeah, that's true. That's true. 39. What was the problem of a light microscope? I've told you before that the light microscope could not see objects that are lesser than half of the wavelength of light. I remember that the wavelength of light is 0 0.55 micrometer. Half of the wavelength of light is 0 0.275. That means any object lesser than 0 0.275 micrometer, right, the, the, white light, sorry, the light microscope could not visualize. The next one we have is white light has an average wavelength of 0 0.59 micrometer that's false white light has an average wavelength of how many again 0 0.55 micrometers micrometers are also called magnifying glasses now okay micrometers sorry micrometers also called microns take note of that microns yes microns so what happens when you view an object smaller than what happens when you view an object smaller than 
0.275 microns take note of this remember we said micrometer is also called microns okay so sometimes instead of using instead of telling you two micrometer that means this thing i wrote here now they wrote here 0.59 micrometer they can also say 0.59 microns take note too so what happens when you view an object smaller than 0.275 microns in the diameter using the light microscope i've told you that it's going to appear blue either it will not show anything or it will just appear what blur. I don't know if you understand. Yes, either it won't show anything or it will appear blur, like just uh, as if I don't know how to put it, like blur. You know what I mean by blur. So that's what we're going to have, ladies and gentlemen. We've come to the end of SLT 103 part two. Uh, SLT 103 part three is going to be very, 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 very massive. But for now, enjoy this once you've seen. You can watch the video one more time, and while watching the video, you try to pause in between to answer the questions yourself. Thank you and God bless you. See you in other videos. I love you.